Hey, welcome back. Thanks for checking out another one of my videos. All right, so this is an interesting problem that I'm going to talk about today. I have this issue where invoices are being generated, but the extended amount is zero. The order total is present, but there's no tax. For some reason, M3 is hiccuping and it's essentially creating an invoice partially. Let me show you what a healthy look invoice looks like. When I look at an invoice, I'm in OIS 350, I go to invoice lines, there's this information type 30, 31, 31. So for every invoice, you get a 30, which is the total, and then you get these 31s, which tally up to the total. And if there's tax, you'll also see a information type 40 on there that shows the tax. There's different kinds of internal charges that'll show up here but essentially the key thing we're going to look at is the 30s and the 31s. This is what a healthy invoice would look like. The invoice we're looking at there, if I look at the invoice lines, there's no type 31s. So that 30, that information type 31, if that's not processed then you're not going to get tax and this is a rare thing. In fact, Enforce says that they have not seen this before and so we have to now research what's causing this. We do over 600,000 invoices a year. I'm talking about 14 invoices that has this weird anomaly to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to correct the deliveries. Actually, I'm going to trick the deliveries to believe that this delivery has not been invoiced and then I'm going to re-invoice it, give it a new invoice number. The old invoice number is still going to exist and accounting is going to have to do a credit for the customer account. But essentially what I'm going to do is trick the order, trick the delivery, and then re-invoice it. And so I'm going to go through the SQL to be able to do something like this. This isn't something that you typically would want to just jump in and do, but if you kind of know your way around the tables, this really isn't that hard to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my invoice number and I'm going to start there. And there's going to be a bunch of queries here. If you want to replicate them, just pause the video. I'm not going to go through and explain in massive detail to what they all do. So this is kind of my workbench of queries for the week, but essentially I'm going to look at the invoice header table and I'm just going to look at the invoice. Before I start changing the data on the back end, I like to get really intimate with my invoice, my deliveries, my orders, to really understand what's going on. So I have a bunch of preset queries I'm going to use to look at it, and I'm just going to plug in my invoice number in all the different queries so I can just go right down the line and potentially update things or just query them real quick. Now the delivery and order number, you can see those on the invoice line table, so I'm going to kind of cheat and see what that information is and then drop it into my other queries. So I have my order number and delivery, so I'm going to drop some of that information in there as well. I'm basically just pre-setting up all my queries so I can just go down and just execute, execute, execute. All right. So there is, another, there is another kind of problem where sometimes I'll actually delete out the invoice and re-invoice it. Uh, but typically that only happens if there's not a voucher tied to it, there's no accounting implications, and there was a hiccup, and I'm just going to re-invoice it. But I'm not going to do that here. Now I'm just going to trick the deliveries and orders. So the first thing that I did is I just took a look at the header, I took a look at the lines, now I'm just going to look at the order status overall. It should be in 7777, which it is. I'll update that later because I need to trick it. 77 means invoiced. I need to set it back to 66. Now I'm going to look at the, the lines. Hopefully it's a small one. It is. It's a one line order. And if I scroll over, I see the, uh, the order quantities 10 and 10, and then the invoice quantities 10 and 10. So the order line thinks it's been invoiced, so I'm going to basically erase these, set these to zero, the invoice quantities, and I'm going to set the delivery quantities to 10. So basically I'm going to make it look like the, the line has been delivered but not invoiced. Now I'm going to look at the delivery table, OD head, should be in a status 80, which it is, and right now it thinks it's been invoiced, and so I need to erase that as well so I can re-invoice it. 
Now I'm going to look at the order lines or the delivery lines rather. Um, I do this because in the case of back orders, you're going to get multiple delivery lines. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm updating the quantities correctly. This is a pretty easy one, but I, it also believes it's been invoiced, so I'm going to have to change, switch the invoices to, to zero, and then update the delivery quantity to 10 to make the delivery think that it's not been invoiced. Then the last thing I do is I look at the OIN ACC table to see if there's any accounting errors. There shouldn't be, but I just, again, I like to be pretty intimate with um, all of this data before I just start changing everything because you can really mess things up if you don't know what you're doing. And that looks healthy, no errors, looks good. All right, let's execute some queries. So I'm not going to touch the invoice header table. I'm not going to touch the line tables. I am, though, going to reset the order header back to 66. And I'm now going to reset the order line. Essentially I'm saying that the delivered quantity equals the invoice quantity. There's two fields that represent that. And then I'm saying the invoice quantity is zero. That's what I'm doing here. So I'm making that update now. Now I'm going to take that delivery head and switch it to 60 and then reset the invoice number to zero. In order to invoice a delivery, it needs to be in status 60. So I'm making that change as well. Um, now I'm resetting the delivery line. I'm basically doing the same thing I did at the order line is I'm wiping out the invoice quantities and setting the delivery. On the order lines, there's two fields that represent delivered quantity and invoice quantity. On the delivery line, there's three fields. And then there's nothing I'm going to do with the accounting uh, or the OIN ACC table. Great. Now that I've did all that, let's just re-invoice it. See my orders in 66 ready to be invoiced. I'm going to launch my invoice. I would not be able to do any of this unless I went back and reset all the tables using SQL. There's no program in M3 to do this. You need someone that's familiar with the back end to Here's my new invoice. You can see there's an extended amount there. The other one didn't have an extended amount. And so I know this is going to be a healthy invoice. If I wanted to look at it in OIS 350, you remember the, the, the unhealthy invoice, if I look at the invoice lines, there's no type 31. But I'll look at the new invoice, and you see there's a 30 and a 31. So. So anyways, that's one way you can trick the system and re-invoice something. Accounting will now have to do a credit on the original invoice, but at least the new invoice is done correctly. If I figure out what that hiccup is, I'll update a YouTube video and let you guys know what we're running into. Hey, thanks for checking out my videos. Appreciate you tuning in.